Today we're working on my little Yanmar here. So I was brush hogging with it the other day and noticed a weird noise came over here and look it blew the head gasket out the side of the block. And that, I don't think that's the right head gasket though because that's like a normal gasket material. And usually head gaskets, at least the ones I've seen, they always have some sort of like metal alloy or something. Like here's the replacement I got and you can see it's some sort of metal here. And then of course this side goes over here so that should have, have blew out the side like that. So this engine was supposedly rebuilt. So I'm wondering if they used the wrong stuff on it. So I guess I'm going to blow this thing off with some compressed air and we'll start tearing it apart and see what's up with it. These injector lines out of the way.
That's why I had a video when I wired this up. That's why I put that plug on there. That way, if you need to take it off, you can. Oh, and the exhaust. Okay, so for taking these head bolts off, or well, it's more important putting them on. I don't think taking them off really matters. But I like, what I call it is a star pattern. And I think that's how you do it. I'm not going to say 100%. It's the way I was taught. It's like lug nuts. You do a star. And people say, what's a star? Well, it's like when you're a kid in school and you draw a star. That's the order you do when you're unbolting stuff. At least that's that's what I was taught, and that's that's how I do it. So, like for this instance, you'd go like that. So, that's the way I'm gonna do it. That's the way I was told. I said, if there's a better way, that's what the comment section's for. Not like one side's all the way pulled up and one's not. So, well, that came loose easier than I thought it would. Oh. I'm about to jump the gun here. I need to pull these rocker arms off. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Well, I might have to take the oil pan off. All right, now let's take this loose. I think I have a deep well socket to fit that. Oh, we got it with that. Okay, that should be all of them.
I guess a gasket is some kind of... It is the same gasket. And that material's in between that. I wonder what caused that to blow out though. Maybe improper torque? That just seems weird to me. Because it wasn't overheating or nothing when it did it. Yeah, I really don't know. So don't be like me and drop the push rod down in the motor there because now I created more work. Goodness. So we gotta drain the oil and pull the pan off. Then the soil pan, it's just a flat piece of metal and it's just got 13 millimeter bolts all the way around it. should be ready to come off. Oh, now I'll drop it in the bucket. <laughs> there we go. Got a push rod back. So don't be like me and uh, drop that in there. To check and make sure this was good and flat, I just used a straight edge and tried to put a filler gauge under it. So, I mean, it all checked out. It's not as good as what they call it a needle dial where you set it on here and you can get it really precise. But I think it should be good enough for what it is. All right. New gasket.
thing doesn't line up 100% there. But the way the holes are, it only goes on one way. I mean, I guess I could take the studs out. Try this in the end here. I couldn't get the center one out, so we'll just. I think I can work it around it. this down far enough to work it. Come on. So the torque spec on these is 114 to 116. So I'm going to go ahead and torque this guy. up a little bit. Dude, I'm just going to snug each of them down quite a bit.
First time, I'm gonna start them all off each at 30. And then we will go up from there. Check out these. I don't think you know what the rain would
get our injector lines back on here. Is that underneath that? Over top. I think over top. It's not, what did I have a 19? Alright. I put the oil pan back on off camera. I'm not sure exactly how much this holds, but I know it's less than a gallon. I took this out of here. Oh, I had that radiator push forward. That's what I did. Actually, the fan belt on here first. I'm gonna get these injectors bled.
Well, there's not any fuel coming out of it. I know why, because I don't have the throttle turned on. It helps when you bleed injectors and you have the fuel turned on. All right, we're gonna fire this thing up. So it says, it doesn't say in the service manual, but the company that sells the gaskets say to fire it up let it get up to operating temperature shut it off let it cool all the way down and then retorque all them bolts and then do it again after like five or ten hours or something so that's what we're going to try and do Got her up to operating temperature, so I'm gonna let this thing cool down, pull the valve cover back off, retorque all the head bolts, and then throw it back together. And I don't see nothing, nothing blew out the side. I don't see anything leaking, so just some residue from before. So I think we're good. Okay, so one thing led to another, and letting this engine cool down ended up it's a new day now. So I'm gonna pull the valve covers off, retorque everything, and then go mow. But two actually turned quite a bit to get back to torque. So maybe there is something to that. Then I think they said do it again at five or ten hours or something. So I probably will do that just because I would rather not change his head gasket again.
All right, this thing seems to be running good. So I don't see any leaks between the head and gasket on either side. It didn't blow the gasket out the side. Of course, I guess for granted last time it lasted a year. At least that's how, how long I've ran it like that. So before anything happened. But I'm going to finish mowing. I got a bunch more over there and on the other side. Do that. And then I got to take it and mow some other places. So. I think we are good to go. Okay, I'm going to take a minute here and just talk, so you might want to skip this part. But next on my high priority list is to get this backhoe back together. So here it is. This in here, I just need to clean all this up and paint it. So we're good in here as far as engines go. I bought this tractor specifically for that Perkins diesel engine, so... That engine's going in the backhoe, and yeah, that thing starts and runs like a champ. I had another video where I fired it up. So anyways, that's something to look forward to. Then as far as once I get this out of here after the backhoe, next on my priority list is to finish my garage here. You can see I hung up a tarp there just to keep birds from flying in here. And then put a piece of plywood over the door hole because no point to put them doors in to take them back out to pour the floor. So that is somewhere on the to-do list, hopefully before winter. So just depending on how things go. And as far as the upstairs of the house, we've done quite a bit up there, but I haven't decided if I'm going to record it or put it on the internet due to privacy reasons. So, yeah, that's that. But then we got this. So, in between the backhoe and finishing the garage, we got to put a motor in this. It's a Volkswagen Touareg 09. It's got a 2 liter turbo engine. And, yeah. So, normally I don't buy Volkswagens that aren't TDIs, but me and my buddy went in half on this, so... Basically, we're putting a motor in it, selling it. So, if anyone has a one of these cars, a whole car would be great with a two liter engine that runs. That would be sweet. Or just a motor would be all right too. So, if you have one of them, you can shoot me an email there. But so that's somewhere in the pro, not a high priority. Just a, when we find a motor or a donor car, that's when that'll get done. So, I don't think it would take more than a day to change that engine. Volkswagens are usually pretty easy. Then after we get the backhoe done, the garage finished, and at some point in between get the motor in that Volkswagen on the trailer, we can finish this TDI swap in the Bronco. So this is just for fun project. It's not a really a priority. It's just when I get around to it. But I do have a bunch of parts for it. So at some point when we get it, we're going to, when I get to working on it, we're going to hit it hard, so. But until then, it'll sit right here and wait its turn. Maybe one day we'll mess with that ugly thing. I really haven't decided yet. Till then, it'll sit there, so. Anyways, that's an update on everything. And this truck, this is what I wanted to do with that Azuzu I had. Was put a dump bed on it and stuff, but parts were kind of hard for them to find, and... You know, and I I just went this route, and I like it better. So, I ended up, I sold the Isuzu and the Big International. So, I don't think I mentioned that in the video. Or I did, but I don't think I uploaded the clip. So, that's yeah, update on that stuff. Just catching everybody up and what's going on. So, I need to take this to go mow a couple houses. And that other Volkswagen is on the trailer. So... I'm going to use my little trailer, which that's normal, but I'm going to tow it with Volkswagen Jetta. I could just use one of my pickup trucks, you know, because I got enough of them around here, but I think it would be funnier using the car, so I don't see what could go wrong.
she's all strapped down. So let's make sure we got trailer lights. Oh yeah, we got marker lights on the sides. That's a plus. I see light back here. Oh yeah, that's blinking. And that one's blinking. Oh, we're good. Marker lights on this side. Sweet. All right, we're, we're ready to go. Traffic road. I wouldn't say I recommend getting on the interstate with this, but just ride along. 